do coin graders get the grade right every single time? In this video, we're going to be talking about a PCGS submission that we got back and an interesting story that we heard about a coin that we picked up recently. Let's get this video started. So before we show you guys this PCGS submission, we wanted to talk to you guys about this 1803 Great plus half dollar that we picked up at the Houston show recently. It's rated XF40 by PCGS. It also is CEC approved. Very original coin. And so we're going to show you a quick clip of the person that used to own this coin, a dealer, and what his thoughts were and what kind of the backstory of this coin was before he submitted it to PCGS and then CAC. Yeah, I bought this coin. Uh, it's an 1803 uh, Drake Bust Half. I bought this in a, a PCGS detail holder, clean. I cracked it out, sent it back in. It came back uh, graded XF40. And uh, then I sent it off to CAC and they cacked it. What do you think? Not bad, huh? So you guys heard that correctly. This coin was in a details holder. He cracked it out. He submitted it. It came back XF40. And then he submitted it to CAC and it passed the CAC. And so what does that really mean? What, what does that kind of tell you, right? There's a lot of people that say, oh, it's corrupt. It's bad. It's this or it's that. What I would have to say is that People that are at the grading companies don't get it right every single time. They're human beings, they're working long hours, they're trying very hard to make this hobby as you know, structured as possible in terms of what grades should be and what grades are. And so as numismatists and as coin dealers, we should be studying what coins are correctly graded and what coins aren't correctly graded because if you can start to pick up on that, there are some coins that really do need an upgrade. There are some coins that were graded details that may have not been details. And PCGS and all the other grading companies don't get it right every single time, but they do get it right most of the time. And so you guys should focus not only on what the paper is or the plastic is, but you really should focus on what the coin is itself. And so don't treat the grading companies harshly based on this video. Treat them like they're just human beings trying to do a job, trying to make the hobby better. And so let's show you guys this PCGS submission. It was a mixed bag. We sent these coins in for Tyler McManus. You guys can check out his uh, YouTube channel below. But yeah, let's show you guys these coins. All right, guys, we got both trays laid out for you here today. Wanted to show you this first tray here. This is a 1926 sesquicentennial, Red Mist State 63. As you can see, there's a lot of kind of uh, slide marks right on the cheek of the obverse of this coin. The luster is really nice, but it's just too ticky and it has those kind of slide marks, like I said. And uh, still a neat coin, but I think it, Mint State 63 is accurately graded there. We have the 78S uh, tape toned Morgan Dollar. These were held in some type of a binder or something like that. And uh, it was kind of held just like this fashion and then the rest of it toned. This one's pretty decent looking. Not the most incredible toning, but does have a lot of character. And State 64 is what it came back as. Then we have this 1943 Washington Quarter. Luster's pretty strong on the coin. But once again, pretty ticky in the fields. I do think that Men's State 63 is a little harsh for this coin. Personally, I graded this one at 64, 65, something like that, but that's okay. In terms of value for this coin from 63 to 65, it really just doesn't seem like it's that crazy. This is a 1946S Washington Quarter. Little few ticks in the fields, but nothing that's too distracting for the coin. Nice luster also. Then we have this 1850 AU Details Cleaned. Large scent. I personally agree with them. If you take a look at the fields here, there's a lot of just uh, almost seems like it's un unnatural surfaces to the coin. Like they put some type of chemical on it. It just feels like it's stripped in some way. So I do agree with them on it being AU details cleaned. It just doesn't have a natural look. Then we have this 1909 Lincoln scent. It's graded MS64 Brown. I think he was aiming for a higher grade here, but when I was taking a look at the obverse, there's a giant hit coming all the way down the suit on Lincoln, and one coming all the way across from right here. Kind of hard to pick up on, but I'll put the true views 
in the video. Has some interesting color to the coin, and I think the true views really pick up on that. The last one, which we talk about grades not being perfect sometimes, this is a 1937 Buffalo nickel. It's graded rat machine damage unk details. This one was in a 66 CAC holder from NGC, and now it's in an unk details rat machine damage. And so uh, who's right, who's wrong? I don't know here. Looks like NGC had a grade on it, CAC agreed with it, and now this is machine damage. The next tray I wanna show you is this 1850 large set. It's a great AU55, nice chocolatey brown color to the coin. I think that, uh, you know, the color is intact. The luster is still around as well, so it's a nice AU. Then we have this 1851 altered surfaces, AU details. So just kind of an odd look to the coin. Not too sure if this would have passed at a different grading company or not, but when you kind of see that kind of that gray metallic color to the coin, I think that's what might have set them back and said the surfaces were altered. Then we have this 1880 Morgan dollar. I think this came out of a tidy house set, which is kind of those cardboard backed um, Morgan dollars they used to send through the mail. The only issue I see on this coin is this really kind of stark blue color and red color on the reverse. Most of the time they're gonna see that as artificial at PCGS. And so I agree with them. They're following the book of what they think is artificial. Now, is it artificial to you? I don't know. Then we have this 1848 large set. It's great XF45. Nice chocolatey brown color to the coin. Nothing seems off in terms of the surfaces. No major hits or distracting marks. Just nice gentle wear. Then we have this 840 Morgan dollar. It's great mint state 64. Soft strike as you can see in the hair there right above the ear. The luster is pretty lacking as well. And that's the reason why I don't think this coin would have gem graded. And you can see this is a weak strike just based on the breast feathers on the reverse also. Still a decent coin, probably only around 100, 110 bucks, nothing crazy. Then we have this proof Franklin half. We have a, you know, kind of a weird pink color on the rim. I do think this one was a 50-50. I have seen color on coins like this a lot, but the reverse does look like it's been cooked. And cooked means, you know, you could see almost this glaze or haze over the back of the coin, like someone put it in an oven or in a hot place for a short amount of time, and it induced the color on the obverse of the coin. Next coin I wanna show you is this 1925 Lexington commemorative half. Like I said again, uh, Men State 63, 64 have a lot of ticky marks to it, and this one is no different. Luster is very strong on both sides of the coin, but just too many hits to call it anything better. Then we have this 1930S uh, Standing Liberty Quarter. It does have some wear on the breast plate on the obverse. The luster is lacking, but it's still present. And so seeing that wear there really does put it at AU58. There's a little wear on the reverse also. So definitely accurately graded. What do you guys think of this interesting PCGS submission? Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on what we talked about today with the grading companies, grades, coins. We'd love to hear your response down below. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.